Welcome to the Man United stream. In today's show, we're going to be talking about Sancho taking down his statement against Eric Ten Hag from Twitter. We talk about Manchester United's need for a new right winger as the El Ghazi rumours prove to be off the mark. We will also talk about all the Manchester United players that have been on international duty during this international break and see which players actually did well and which players didn't do so well. And finally, we'll be talking about the record-breaking £60 million shirt sponsor deal Manchester United have signed with Qualcomm snapdragon and that is going to make a huge difference to manchester united as a commercial entity we'll talk about all that and what that means for the takeover and, and what that means for the glazers like always please hit that like button on the video so it gets pushed out to many more manchester united fans and if you're new to the channel please go ahead and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the latest breaking manchester united news let's kick off the show with the whole Jaden sancho news yes Jaden sancho sat down earlier this week to discuss his future and try and resolve this whole situation that kicked off after after the Arsenal game where Ten Hag made some comments about Jadon Sancho not training well enough and that's why he wasn't within the squad playing against Arsenal. Now Jadon Sancho immediately after these comments were made by Ten Hag put out a statement on Twitter and he pinned it so it was on top of his Twitter feed saying that these were not true. These comments made by Ten Hag were not true. They weren't accurate and there was a lot more that he was not prepared to say. And essentially, in that statement, he said he was being scapegoated by the club and by Ten Hag. So there was a huge fallout after the statement made by Jadon Sancho. Many believe that this was not the correct course of action to take. If Jadon Sancho did not agree with what Ten Hag has said, he should have approached him privately and try and discuss this with him privately rather than go onto social media and make the statement. It was not good form by Jadon Sancho and many would accept that he shouldn't have undermined Ten Hag in such a way. But yesterday, we saw Sancho actually delete that tweet from his Twitter feed and it went away. So what does that mean for his situation with Ten Hag and Manchester United? Does that mean that they've resolved the situation or does it mean something else? Or is deleting of the tweet just a simple agreement that's been made between Ten Hag and Sancho that he will delete the tweet but then also Ten Hag will allow him to leave Manchester United? There are talks that that is part of the agreement. There are rumours that that is what's actually happening. That Sancho has in that meeting agreed with Ten Hag that he will take that statement down and Ten Hag will allow him to leave in January as he wishes. But we're guessing that this will become clear once we play Brighton and see whether Sancho is part of the squad, whether he's on the subs bench or whether he's actually playing for Manchester United. That will tell us everything we need to know about the situation and about the relationship between Ten Hag and Sancho and where it stands. Or is the deleting of the tweet by Sancho a simple acceptance that he wants to move on and he just wants the situation to be resolved and he wants Manchester United to allow him to leave in the January transfer window? Personally, I can't see any way how Sancho is going to be part of the squad against Brighton. Ten Hag is going to take action against him. Ten Hag has to keep everyone in check in the team and he's going to know that if he lets Sancho off the hook, then, well, every other player might decide to put out a statement there every time they get criticised by the manager, every time they're not getting picked or any, anything that they're not happy with they might just go on Twitter and let it all rip that's not a good precedent to set so I think Ten Hag really is going to come down hard on Sancho and rightly so you cannot allow players to control the narrative and to have that power over the manager the manager has to have the ultimate say and if the manager says that you're not training well enough well then that's the end of the matter you don't go around on social media or any other type of media challenging your manager openly saying that he's not right and he's not being honest no, that's not how it works. At Manchester United, there has to be a hierarchy. Ten Hag has to be at top of that hierarchy and the players have to respect him. Whether what Ten Hag was saying was true or not, we don't know. But what Sancho ought to have done when he's gone directly to Ten Hag the next morning, knocked on his office door and said, look, mate, you have not been telling the truth and I'm not happy with this. It would have been a lot better to keep it internal and not air your dirty laundry in public. Now, many people would say, well, wait up, Ten Hag did that. Why did Ten Hag publicly call out Sancho? Number Number one, Ten Hag's team had just lost to Arsenal 3-1, so probably not in a very good mood. The other thing is that he might have thought that Sancho might react positively to the criticism. He might come out firing on all cylinders. He might come out and say, right, OK, I'm going to pull my socks up and do really well in training. I'm going to show Ten Hag that I can be picked for the team and I'm going to work harder. So that is why his comments weren't a surprise. And to suggest that Ten Hag's comments were somewhat out of the ordinary as a manager, it's not true. Most managers come out and say such things about their players. It's about the player then reacting and making sure that they come and do better at training. And that's where Sancho, I think, has let himself down 
down. Look, to be fair, I've always liked Sancho. I've really, really wanted him to do really well for Manchester United ever since he joined from Borussia Dortmund. However, all Manchester United fans will accept that Jadon Sancho hasn't reached them peaks that he ought to have. We thought he's going to come in and take the Premier League by storm. Most Manchester United fans thought he'd be doing something what Bellingham is doing at Real Madrid, come in and take the Premier League by storm. But Sancho hasn't done that, unfortunately. Now, some people have said that this could be down to Sancho's personal life, that he's partying all the time he's doing other things but we don't know so we can't really go ahead and start commenting and making accusations such as that but what we do know is that it is very hard for a young player to come in to a massive club like Manchester United and take all that pressure and deal with it. It's not easy. Sancho's off the field life could be a factor to the way he's playing at Manchester United. We don't know. But what we do know is that a player who is settled normally does better on the pitch. What are your thoughts on Sancho? What do you think? Do you think he should leave Manchester United? Do you think he should stay and work hard and try and fight back into the team? Let us know. Do you even think that Ten Hag has a choice in the matter? Do you think if he plays him, he'll play well? Or do you think he's just simply going to just go along with what the player wants? If the player wants to leave, Ten Hag is just going to allow that to happen and he's got no choice in the matter. Since Sancho's meeting with Ten Hag, we started getting rumours and news that Manchester United were looking at El Ghazi as a replacement right winger. He's a free agent, he used to play for Aston Villa and PSV Eindhoven and Manchester United were looking to sign him. We heard this news a couple of days ago, we did report this on our show. However, it now appears that these rumours were just entirely rumours. There were nothing concrete. Manchester United were not looking at El Ghazi. They haven't been looking at El Ghazi and they're not going to sign any right winger. They're talking about playing someone else from within the squad in the right wing position whilst Anthony is away and maybe Sancho might fight back. We don't know. But right now it looks like Palestri is going to be that player that's going to play in the right wing. And if not Palestri, there's also talk about playing Garnacho there, Mount there or Bruno Fernandes. So Manchester United have got plenty of right wing choices to play on that right wing. So they're not too concerned about going out there and bringing in reinforcements, bringing in someone else to play that right wing position, which is good news, I think, because I think Manchester United have got lots of players in the squad that can play in that position. And I don't think they need to be rushing out and panic buying anybody else. Let us know who you'd play on the right wing and why. Okay, so please drop your comments below. Let me know what you think about who should be playing on the right wing for Manchester United. Should it be Plestri or Mount or whether it should be Garnacho? Let us know in the comments below what you think. It's always lovely to hear from you guys. So moving on, we finally finished this international break. Yes, thank God it's over with. It's so boring without Premier League football and having to watch international football is just horrendous I don't care what you say it's not entertaining at all and there's been plenty of Manchester United players in action for their nations the standout players have been Bruno Rashford and Hoyland Bruno Fernandes had a masterclass of a performance against Luxembourg where they went and won 9-0 against Luxembourg that was amazing and Bruno Fernandes was playing out of his skin what a performance that was now, in the Scotland v England game last night, we saw a few Manchester United players playing in that game. We saw McTominay, we saw Rashford, and we also had Maguire come on at half-time for England. And, well, that's what we're going to move on to because Maguire had a bit of a shocker in that game. He scored an own goal. There was lots of cheering by Scottish fans for Maguire. Southgate going against his own rules about not picking players who are not playing regular football still picks Maguire as his key centre-back. And after this Scotland v England game where Harry Maguire scored an own goal, Southgate, the England manager, came out defending him and actually had a go at the English media for not supporting Harry Maguire enough and in fact said that he was being picked on by many of the TV pundits and by the English media. I don't, I don't feel that is true. I feel that Harry Maguire has been let off the hook by much of the media in his past performances for England and more importantly for his performances for Manchester United. And the only person you could actually blame for the performances is Harry Maguire and he's turned himself into a joke. We discussed how it was important for Harry Maguire to leave Manchester United and go and play for West Ham and get regular football within a club team. Now Harry Maguire chose not to do that. He chose not to join West Ham. He turned them down and now you can't blame anybody else but Harry Maguire for not having played enough minutes on the pitch to then be informed to go and be playing for England. Now this is something that Southgate needs to consider. Why is he picking a player that isn't playing regular club football? Why is he picking a player that's not 
in form? Why is he putting Maguire in the spotlight time and time again? Of course this was going to happen. Of course he was going to make mistakes. And of course the opposition teams, fans and the media will go in hard on Maguire knowing that he's not doing well. What do you think about Harry Maguire? Now let's be fair here, okay? Let's be fair. What do you genuinely think about Harry Maguire and his treatment that he's getting from opposition fans, from his own fans, from the media? Do you think it's fair? Do you think it's of his own making? Or do you think everyone is jumping on his back and giving him a hard time for no reason whatsoever? Please drop your comments below. We love to hear from all you people out there. So make sure you drop your comments below. Leave your comments on everything that we discuss. And by the way, hit that like button if you've not already done so and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Now we mentioned in our show yesterday that Manchester United were on the verge of signing a huge £60 million deal with a new shirt sponsor Qualcomm. Now that appears to have gone through and Manchester United have signed a deal worth £60 million for the new shirt sponsor. This name actually on the shirts will be Snapdragon, which is a company name that is used by Qualcomm. It's an IT company based in the US. Now this is a huge deal worth 60 million, the highest for any football club out there. Another example of the commercial power of Manchester United. And the Glazers will be showing off this deal to the rest of the world saying, look, this is why we feel Manchester United is not worth three billion or four billion or five. We feel it's worth seven to 10 billion because of this power that it has commercially to go out there and get these deals done and maybe maybe Sheikh Yassim and maybe Sir Jim Ratcliffe are sitting there thinking wow this is why they're asking for so much money and this is why we should maybe look to increase on our bids and this 60 million pound deal where does this leave the takeover? Are the Glazers still looking to sell Manchester United or are they just now going to sit back and take this money and enjoy the rest of the time at Manchester United? Now in our show yesterday we did discuss that Sir Jim Ratcliffe had finally broken his silence and come out and spoke about his bid for Manchester United. Although it was a short statement he did make some comments about this bid that he's made for Manchester United and still sitting there hopeful that the Glazers will end up selling the club. But this this £60 million deal clearly shows why the Glazers are reluctant to sell Manchester United and let go because they feel that they can go on and make lots and lots of money from Manchester United. £60 million for a two-year shirt deal is huge, huge deal. And this is why the Glazers are probably sat there thinking, we don't want to let go of all this money. We want to stay on. We want to be doing these deals going forward. If this is what it's worth right now, what could it be worth in a couple of years? What could Manchester United be bringing in in a couple of years' time? The more that the takeover process gets delayed and the more that you hear about these £60 million shirt deals, the more you think, why? Why can there not be a bidder that just comes in and slaps down £10 billion on the Glazers and gets rid of them and takes our club back and saves us from the Glazers? Why could that not be the case? I really do hope that there is someone out there who could just come in and do that. Why? Because I just want the Glazers out. I feel like the Glazers are just milking everything that they can from Manchester United in these kind of deals they're making they're making these deals so they can make their money they can line their own back pockets it's not that they're making these deals so they can go and spend on Manchester United but on a positive note I think the word Snapdragon looks a lot better than TeamView our current sponsorship for the shirts I think Snapdragon looks a lot more cooler a lot more cleaner what are your thoughts on this huge 60 million sponsorship deal do you think it's a good thing for Manchester United or do you think it's a negative thing for Manchester United because of the Glazers and how they might not want to sell let us know drop your comments below also what do you think about the name do you think snapdragon is better than team viewer drop your comments below make sure you hit the like button on the video and like i said if you're new to the channel and this is the first time you're watching our channel or you've been watching for quite some time but you've never subscribed hit that subscribe button what are you waiting for you're watching the man united streamer channel by the fans for the fans